Hey now, so as you can tell by the background, I'm in my office. I am not at home doing an autograph analysis, but we're still on Ricky Henderson. But I see a lot of end of year recap videos and I don't have many pickups because of the fact that I haven't picked up that much this year. Uh, but what I do see a lot of videos of that I've never done before is like top 10 most valuable autographs or whatever collection stuff in your collection. I saw Mike did a top 50 and I just went back and did a top 10. I'm going to show that off in a second. So, and it's much tougher to price these because the markets on these autographs I'm about to show is so rare. There's no each rows in here. There's no Connie's in here, no trouts in here. These are autographs you're all going to see for the most part. There's probably less than 20 known autographs of these Hall of Famers on the market. So what the price is, I don't know. But without any further ado, let's look at what I think are the top 10 most valuable autographs in my collection. I'm getting a little cold in here. So share the screen here. So we're starting with probably, definitely not the rarest autograph in my collection, but it's still a very expensive autograph. And that is a Babe Ruth signed check. Uh, actually the check, this is a picture I got from Heritage. And when I got the check originally, uh, it was in this like very old holder. It made it look very yellow, but the, the check is very vibrant once I took it out of this holder. Uh, it's only a GH Ruth check, but these checks are still going for six, $7,000 because of the fact that Ruth is just gaining popularity. I mean, he's one of the goats, people think at least. And obviously he died in 1947. This is in 1940. And the checks, I mean, just the fact that stuff is being forged so well now. These authentic checks have really increased in value. I paid $4,000 for this right before the pandemic started. Obviously, it's gone up almost double since then. So anyways, Babe Ruth, this by far will be the most common autograph you will see when we go through the top 10. Uh, many of them you probably may have never even heard of. So, But again, they're all Hall of Famers. Uh, I have one potential Hall of Famer that could be very valuable in a year from now. That's a separate video. Uh, number two right here is Camp Anson. And again, Camp Anson, there's probably 25 or 30 autographs known of his, but this autograph is special. And what makes this autograph so special is this seal right here. Uh, he's Camp Anson signed this in a short time. He was city clerk. And I did show this to Kevin Keating once, and he's told me he's never seen a Camp Anson autograph with the seal of Chicago right here. Uh, I found this on Etsy of all places, and I paid under $1,000 for this. Uh, Kevin Keating offered me $5,000 on the spot. That was in 2017. So I don't know what it'd be worth right now. Uh, a Camp Anson autograph's a couple thousand, but the fact that, again, it has the seal with it, I mean, I think that only increases the value of it. And it's in a beautiful book, which I want to get into. So that's number two. Number three, and I forgot which one. Okay, number three is Ray Brown. And he was one of the 2006 New York League inductees. And many of you probably never heard of him. And I think there's only four known autographs out there, Ray Brown, this being one of them. This is the only signed photo known of him. This was put together and collected by a very famous Negro League autograph collector. Uh, it was bought, I purchased through like, a, one, know, let's say a Hakes, which is not a very known auction house. And they got the whole collection. And since then it's been disseminated. And there were a couple of Ray Browns in that. I think there were two Ray Brown. Well, one, this one, a partial Ray Brown. And there are a couple of contracts of Ray Brown out there. And that's it. Everything else you see is 99.9% .9 fake. Uh, this is a beautiful team signed photo from the 1947 uh, Mexican League team he was on, including Ray Brown right here. Uh, I did pay 3500 for this. I would guess it would sell, again, in the right auction, it would probably sell for double that today. Uh, I was really torn whether or not to include this. The autograph is a bit impaired, uh, but it's no question, a, a real autograph. So, and again, there's less, like I said, less, definitely less than 10 known autographs of him. So moving on to the next one. Okay. Frank Chance. And if you go into the PSA database, and we talked about this when I did Frank Chance's uh, autograph analysis, there's probably, again, less than 10 Frank Chance autographs. He died very young, I think in the 1920s. And what makes this so unique is the fact that almost every Frank Chance out there is a signed uh, cut. So, and again, I'm not a big fan of cuts. 
Uh, it's tough to see because of the lighting here. But this is, says FLC and the Cubs is from his Cub Ranch. It's on the letterhead, which just is beautiful, beautiful letterhead. In addition to that, it's got a full autograph. Like I said, if you go in the PSA database under the autograph facts, this is the autograph on the autograph facts. And uh, this is the most I ever paid for an autograph. I paid five figures for this autograph. Uh, I, I was very lucky to work with a dealer who let me pay over times. And I, that's why I miss dealers today, because they would work with you. So it took me quite a while to pay this off. Uh, I don't know if it's increased in value necessarily from what I paid for it. So I had paid like, I think I paid 12000 to be honest for this. And I think it's probably worth maybe a little more than that right now, again, in the right auction house, in the right hands especially like a Chicago auction, but uh, it's still very valuable and very rare autograph. So we're moving to the next one. Oh, Luke Gehrig. Again, is Luke Gehrig that rare of an autograph? Yeah, he's pretty rare. I mean, everyone knows the story. He passed away from ALS and all that. What makes this autograph really special, and if you know my collection, I like data. I don't like cuts. Uh, I almost thought about putting Joe Kelly in here, and I did not because Joe Kelly is a cut, and it just even though I know it's real and authenticated, bothers me. This Luke Gehrig is a postcard government postcard and i think it was signed in 19 it may have been signed in 1927 or 1937 i don't know when but the bottom line is government postcards really didn't pick up steam in the collecting area until the 19 late 1930s early 1940s after garrick had already stopped signing so there and i talked to a, someone who collects exclusively government postcards and he doesn't even have a Lou Gehrig and believe me money is no option with this guy it was just the fact that this sold through i think either christie's or sotheby's it was not an auction house that people go to to look for autographs. And it wasn't a highly publicized the auction. And I got it for $5,000. I thought that was, a, well, 6,000 after the juice, but I thought that was a steal. I think this autograph hit the market today. It could be almost a five figure autograph just because of the fact that it's a government postcard and not a cut. It's, and moving on, we just talked about Ned Hanlon. I can't, really discuss how I got this. No, it's not stolen or anything like that. It was originally released by the, someone's a heritage, not heritage auction, a legendary auctions, which no longer exists because of the fact that the, I think Mastro is involved with that. But the bottom line is it's a very, very rare autograph. He died very young as most people know. And there aren't many autographs that are out there. This is, they think this may be the oldest known contract. The contract's from like 1870s or maybe 1890. Whatever it is, it's very old. And because of that, like I said, these things don't come very often. The last one of these, and I don't know if this was the very height of not, yeah, COVID. I think one may of these sold for like close to $27,000. Now, do I think this would fetch that in the market? No, I'm trying to find right now that auction and I can't find it, unfortunately. But again, this is easily a five-figure autograph. There's no doubt in my mind. So I'm, just, I'm checking on the other page to see if I can find it, but no luck. So, but again, I think, again, this is definitely a five-figure autograph. They don't come up for sale very often. Moving on to the next one, Tim Keefe. Uh, again, I've talked about Tim Keefe before. Some autographs have come out since. Uh, I paid, I think, after the juice, around 6000 for this. And I talked to the person that sold me that Ray Brown autograph that we looked earlier. And even he said, I got a great deal on this. Uh, Tim Keefe, there were only two known autographs until this Northeast collections come out. Since then, another six have been discovered. So we're up to close to 10 autographs of him. This has a little bit of ink spill on it. I still think, again, in the right hands, right auction house, this is another five figure autograph easily. So. Again, very rare. And all of these, except for the Ruth and the Gehrig, if you go on the PSA rarity index, are not even rated because they're that rare. Uh, another one, you know, there's five out there. I know Bill's talked about his. I know Mike's talked about his. This is a Sam Thompson postcard. Uh, it's only signed Sam. It's probably about it. I paid 2500 for this. This was before the other three got out there that Bill or two, sorry, other two that got the Bill and Mike got. So before that time, there were three known autographs of Sam Thompson, including this one right here. And it's probably a $7,500 autograph. REA sold one, I know. And I think it went for about $7,500 could be wrong but again it's, it's the very similar idea what's nice about mine and what's interesting about mine compared to bills and 
mics, and again, I think those are both real. I want to make that very clear. They're both real. Is the fact that mine has a cancellation on it. I don't know why is there word cancel. To me, I think it makes it a little bit nicer, but again, I could be wrong. What do I know? So moving on. Uh, Les Wilkinson, a many of you, unless you're a deep, deep Hall of Fame collector, won't even know who J.L. Wilkinson is. Uh, J.L. Wilkinson founded the Kansas City Monarchs. He is considered a pioneer in the game because not only was he founded the Kansas City Monarchs, he invented night baseball. Bottom line is there's again, less than 10 known autographs in the world. You could argue that this is one and a half autographs because I have the full name here of Les, which is his middle name, which is what he went by. The J was just an initial. and But I had the full J.L. Wilkinson here. This I bought for Jim Stinson. I paid 6000 for this autograph. And in my opinion, this is one of the two nicest J.L. Wilkinson autographs out there. Again, this is how they canceled it back then. There wasn't a stamp. There was just a cancellation like this. This came directly from the family. What it'll go for today? I don't know. Probably this, again, it's he's not like let's say a household name to Les Wilkinson, but again, it's still close to a five figure autograph because it's that rare. And people like myself, we need to get all the autographs, we need to get Les Wilkinson. And he's again, he's just not out there. Uh, very tough, very rare autograph. So, last but not least, and I've talked about this one before. This is my Eddie Plank autograph. And an Eddie Plank autograph on a, like a baseball just sold for $40,000. Uh, I paid, I think, $4,000 for this in golden. Kind of a screw up. This is from 1913, this autograph. It's signed in pencil, which actually helps because of the fact that because it's in pencil, it doesn't fade. Pencil really doesn't fade. And I keep it out of the light. And again, the reason why I'm doing this on Photo Bucket is these autographs are not in my man cave. They're in a safety deposit box. You're not going to see any of them hung on my wall because not that I'm afraid about them being stolen as much as the fact that if I were to lose these autographs, somehow they get lost in a fire. They're irreplaceable. I mean, no money can replace these autographs. And Eddie Plank, it's just for some reason, he's a really, really, really tough autograph of a 300 game winner, arguably the greatest lefty of all time. So and again, you also have Eddie Collins here, Connie Mack here, and, and Harry Davis. And there's lots of stories you can look up about this Gettysburg banquet that was thrown in his honor. And like in the stories, all four of these players are there. This has all the certificates. Again, I'm not worried it's fake. I know it's not fake. Uh, I stole this. I mean, if this hit the market today, I would think 30, 40,000. I really think that is a comfortable estimate for this piece. So anyways, we're done with that. That is about it. Like I had Ross Young's, I thought about throwing him on there, Spalding, Miller Huggins, but like those are the really top 10. And I gotta be honest, next year, unless the Hall of Fame voting goes what I think it may go for the Veterans Committee, I don't think this list will change. Uh, I don't have the money that I used to <laughs> to spend for autographs. And not only that, I mean, this year in terms of autographs, I only saw three Hall of Famers that I didn't have. They come up for auction. Uh, one was Rupert Foster, one was Jack Chesbro, and one was Christy Mathewson, which is again, he would be up there. We'd love to have Christy Mathewson. So let me know what you think. Maybe you'll hit the like button. Maybe you won't. Uh, I'll probably do try to do one or two more videos to get to Ricky Henderson by the end of the year. And until then, as always, keep collecting.